Hi, my name's Amanda and I'm an art instructor at the Art Gallery of Ontario. We're going to make a piece together today, an art piece, and we're going to be inspired by a piece that is on display at the AGO right now. It's a piece that's part of the British Watercolour exhibit on till October 25th, and it's a piece by artist Beatrix Potter called The Study of a Head of a Bat, Full Face. It's a watercolour piece, and it got me really excited. Got me excited about Halloween, which is one of my favorite holidays that's coming up just around the corner. Got me thinking about animals in particular, nocturnal animals. And it got me excited about what watercolour can do in terms of texture. So we're gonna make a watercolour mask together. You're gonna need a few things. You'll need some watercolour paper. Watercolour paper is nice and thick, so it will be able to withstand being worn as a mask. And you do want it because it can handle the amount of water that is required for uh, watercolor paint. You're gonna obviously need some watercolors. Any kind of set you might have or can find at a store is great. And you'll need some brushes to go along with that. And of course, access to some water. You'll also need a glue stick or some kind of glue and probably a drawing utensil like a pencil. And I also like to use a permanent marker as well. Um, you will need scissors and a hole punch will be helpful if you have access to one. And we're gonna embellish this with some oil pastels. So if you don't have oil pastels, they're just also like crayons, you can use crayons. You just do want something oil-based. And to complete the whole thing at the end, you're probably gonna want some ribbon. So I'm just doing a test page right now. And I'm just experimenting with different lines, different patterns, and thinking about texture. So I might wanna think of the animal that I want to create and what type of texture it has. Does it have fur? Does it have scales? Does it have feathers? And how can I depict those different textures from that animal in a pattern using line? So I'm starting to use the watercolor now on my experimentation page. I obviously wanna use a lot of water on my brush as I need the water to activate the watercolors. And then I'm just gonna load up my brush with some color and I'm gonna start seeing what happens when I basically paint over that pastel. I can try a few different techniques. I can actually load up my area first with water and then grab some watercolor and watch it basically kind of smudge all through the area. I can do this on areas I've already painted and watch the colors bleed together, which is really fun. Or I can grab a nice solid color and go on top of an area that I've done a pattern with that oil pastel. And this is great. You can see that there's some white there. So they use a little bit of lines from the oil resist. So now let's start drawing out our mask. So you're just gonna wanna draw it out on the watercolor paper, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you've created enough space for your eyes and that your mask is wide enough to cover your face. The way that I did that was I basically measured the space between my eyes, which is two fingers. And I made that sure that there was two fingers distance between my eyes there that I drew. And then I also measured the width and I actually just used ribbon and did like a basic measurement along my eyes and just made sure that that matched the width of the mask just by making two little points. You also wanna think about the animal that you're making and what makes that animal unique. The piece that we're getting inspiration from is a study. And that means that the artist spent some time looking at a bat and it's drawing it over and over again, basically to learn what makes it a bat. So when we think about it, the ears are super important for a bat as that's how they hear and move around. And those little fangs are also really important to make it look like a bat. So I made sure to include those two things and kind of emphasize them. I also went over my drawing in permanent marker because I kind of like that look, it gives it a little bit more of a cartoony look, but that's up to you. And so now I'm adding some texture on my mask, I'm using the oil pastel and I'm creating different lines. So that way my mask is really interesting and mimics the texture of whatever animal I might be creating. I'm using different patterns in as many areas as I can. Now let's add the watercolor. My favorite part about making a mask this way is that I don't have to stay inside the lines. I've let my colors bleed together here, which is a nice touch. And now we're gonna cut this out. So we cut out our mask. Right now it's one piece. You might wanna do some embellishments here. So 
The first mask that I made, I actually made my ears on a separate piece of paper. Um, so they stick out a little bit more, which you could have done instead. Um, I also did some adding on. I added some embellishments around the eyes and you can do that here with any kind of piece of paper or maybe you want to cut out from your experimentation sheet and add some more fur in the eye area or think about the kind of animal that you created if there are more embellishments that you can add. We're also going to poke our holes for our ribbon. They go right beside the eyes. You just want to make sure that you don't go too close to the edge. So you want to give about at least a finger's distance in. So that way you don't end up um, breaking that hole. Once you've tied on those ribbons, try on your mask. Show us what it looks like. We would love to see your mask. Give us a hashtag AGO makes so we can see what you created. Till next time.